It has become a common meme. As soon as a scandal brews, we tack a gate onto the end of it. We could call this one Russiagate. The Mueller probe has now entered its second year, and both Democrats and President Trump are comparing it to Watergate, but for very different reasons. Here's President Trump's tweet. Wow, word seems to be coming out that the Obama FBI spied on the Trump campaign with an embedded informant. Andrew McCarthy says there's probably no doubt that they had at least one confidential informant in the campaign. If so, this is bigger than Watergate. By the way, he mentions Andrew McCarthy. He's an editor at the National Review. Trump's not the only one talking about Watergate. Carl Bernstein, one of the Washington Post reporters who broke Watergate, says in many ways this is worse than the Nixon scandal. But Team Trump continues to call it a witch hunt with no validity. The newest member of Trump team, Rudy Giuliani, totally agrees. And he's become the front man who's blasting the Mueller probe all over Fox News. What is your optimal timeline for this to wrap up? They should do it today. I mean, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I think that they have the facts from which they can write their report. If you're going to write a fair report, fine, write it. If you're going to write an unfair report, write it, and we will combat it. We're ready to rip it apart. And we're ready to rip them apart, if that's what they want. Speaking of ripping them apart, let's introduce tonight's panel. Scott Levinson is here. He's the founder and president of the Advance Group. And on the other side of the table, Mike Morey. He's a managing director at SKD Knickerbocker. I, I doubt very much that the president's claim that this is worse than Watergate is going to find uh, a lot of support here at the panel tonight. But, uh, Mike, is it just, I, I'm not sure exactly like how I would describe the the... The, the, using Watergate and defending the president on this one when it seems so clearly an example of Watergate comparison. I, your reaction? It's Watergate to the exponential, you know, to the, the fifth, fifth degree. I mean, you've got payoffs. You have got obstruction of justice. I mean, this, this, in this case, you've got porn stars involved now. You've got foreign governments interfering with an election. You've got meetings that happened between the president's family uh, and arguably people who were advancing uh, an effort of a foreign government inside our democratic process. So it certainly is bigger than Watergate. The president's right about that. It's bigger than Watergate. For it to, to somehow attack the probe um, by saying that the scandal of the probe right. is bigger than Watergate is kind of... Uh, I don't understand it. Is, it. is it just hubris, or or is this a coordinated campaign to undermine the Mueller investigation so that whatever the results are, Trump supporters won't believe it? It's actually worse than that. It's a coordinated effort to undermine the FBI. And I don't know any precedent, president, precedent for a president attacking the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the integrity of these lifetime law enforcement officials. The FBI has always been perceived as above the fray, above politics and Giuliani and Trump are dragging them into politics with a clear political agenda, ready to not just undermine the probe, but undermine the FBI. That's a real problem. And not only that. I think Michael's point, I'm sorry for yeah, the Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Michael's point about a foreign government being involved is clearly what makes this much larger than Watergate. Once you talk about collusion with a foreign government to influence a U.S. election, I don't know what differs from treason. And, you know, I, just to add on, on the point about the FBI, this is the president who ran as if he was the only champion in the 50 states that supported law enforcement and the police. Um, and yet here now you have law enforcement agents who he literally, and in, in, in his henchman Giuliani, is literally epping out there referring to them in the context of the Gestapo. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I do think... Which, interestingly enough, is really what he's doing. By undermining the yeah. FBI, he's setting a stage for his own independent... He's completely super. undermining law enforcement in the United States. So every police officer, every uh, federal law enforcement official should be paying close attention. Absolutely. The President of the United States is undermining confidence in law enforcement. Absolutely correct. We're, we're six months away from a midterm election here, and, and the outcome, the result of that election may very well determine the, out, the, the end result of the Mueller probe, only because he'll come up with his report and it'll be a political issue that Congress has to deal with. Should Democrats be campaigning on Mueller and, and the Trump investigation and possible impeachment, or is that something they have to be very careful about? Well, I think you could easily campaign against Donald Trump, the Donald Trump agenda, and the implementation of the Donald Trump agenda. There are enough negatives associated with Donald Trump that you don't have to go to war on impeachment. But how do, you counter, how, how do you counter the push that we're starting to see from the White House and from other Republicans that a vote for a Democrat is a vote to impeach your president as they're talking to... Republicans and that they're trying to undermine your vote for president. I mean, they can go after the Republican base as much as they want, but there's going to be no crossover appeal to that, and they're going to lose ours in that way. 
But I don't like people don't like the idea of impeachment. Well, uh, look, I don't. So it it might be all well and good in a Democratic primary to talk about impeachment, but if I'm getting ready to run in a general election or even now, I'd say no, it's not the best argument. First of all, we impeach him. Impeach him on the fact that he's more interested in protecting Chinese jobs than American jobs at this point. Impeach him on the fact that he's done nothing about gun violence in the United States, even though even most gun owners in the United States are is simply are interested in background checks for that matter. Impeach him on the fact that he has completely undermined every environmental regulation in the country. So that's how I would talk about impeachment, not impeaching the man to remove him from office, because I don't think Americans, as much as they may think that Donald Trump lies and that they can't trust him, I don't think what most people want is just someone in the White House and in Congress who actually works for them. But when I, when I, think, of, when I think of swing districts that Democrats are going to have to win if they're going to win back control of the House, I think of New York's 19th. That's John Faso's seat. It's, it's a leaning Republican district, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you win that race running against Trump's policies. Because they voted for him, and they voted for no, him two years no, ago. No, they voted, I, I think the people who voted the people who voted for Trump two years ago are leaving him in droves now because it's not just the strict policy; it's the ugliness he's introduced to the American discourse. It's this ugliness that he's introduced to the American dialogue. So, so and this pitting people against each other is glaringly ask the, clear. A, ask the average person in the 19th Congressional District, what did Donald Trump do for you? What did Donald Trump actually do for you? Donald Trump promised you an America's first jobs agenda. And let's look at the, I mean, he went out into the Midwest, stood with carrier workers, told them they weren't getting laid off. And what happened? They got laid off, jobs got shipped to Mexico. He talked about stopping cheap Chinese imports and China's cur currency manipulation. What's he do? He's now working with the president of China to save 70,000 Chinese jobs. And, and I'm, I'm with you both. And you, you know I'm both in the same bubble on this that, that you are. But I guess my question is, how do we know if this is playing outside the, the Democratic leaning bubble? How do we know if people either in the middle or even Trump supporters are actually starting to walk away from him and, and that's starting to change? You don't know because there's an undercurrent of Trump supporters who won't admit they're Trump supporters and that's a constant underneath his support for his candidacy and his presidency. But at the same time the poll numbers are clear that his popularity of two years ago right after he got elected is not what it is today. And a lot of that is because of things like today. He's seen as impotent as it comes to the real issues facing our country. Although his job approval numbers are up and the generic ballot is tightening, I just get a little, I get a little anxious. I hope you're right, but I, I get oh, a little I'm, anxious. We're all got to be anxious. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to look at the search for the next attorney general of New York. Front runners are emerging, and some big names could even run as third-party candidates this November.